Welcome to Junkyard Hunts, where we turn trash into hunts. Today we're going to be making a skull candle. And because we're making skulls, we are going to do a milk jug skull. Because that is the cheapest way to make a skull. You actually need a nice um, non-plastic skull to melt a milk jug on, and you just use a heat gun cut open the milk jug, take the top and the handle off, put it on as best as you can, and then just use the heat gun to melt the plastic down using some type of rag to push those features in, or towel or gloves, whatever you want to do. Uh, I don't like the gloves idea because it uh, the gloves get really hot and it just heats up your hand, and so your hand becomes hot. Uh, my uh, skull candles, I am making uh, two different skulls for it. Um, because of that, uh, if you just think in advance about what you, how you want this end product to look like, you don't have to melt all of it down. So I didn't have to melt its teeth down to form that, that teeth little area. Because I knew I was just going to cut it off. But for the other skull, I wanted a more complete skull for it, so I will be doing the teeth part. So just plan ahead as you're making these, and you'll be able to save yourself some time. But if you don't want to plan ahead, then just make two complete skulls and then cut it down to however you want. Uh, don't forget to hit subscribe. We make props every Monday. Now for the base of these skull candles, I am just going to use some cardboard. And to line up these skulls a little better, uh, since this is just plastic, it's easy just to cut out those little holes and gaps so you can have the skulls like on top of each other. For the actual candle holders, uh, we're taking uh, toilet paper rolls or paper towel rolls, whatever you have saved up, and we're just cutting them straight down the line and using more than one of them to make an actual bigger holder than the actual tea light candle things that we'll be using to put in there. Uh, it will just look a little bit nicer and fancier, but you can just make them the long and skinny types. I do have one long skinny type on here uh, where I don't actually cut the paper, tall, paper towel holder apart so that it just stays its normal skinny size, which is a good size uh, for the the tea light candles that I'm actually putting in there. For the tops, uh, we're just measuring up some more cardboard uh, around it and cutting out the little circles so that they can easily just put in a circle top to be able to hold the candle. I of course uh, changed my mind after a little bit. I want the uh, tea light candles to actually be more inlay on these circle tops and so I take that cardboard piece out and get more paper towel rolls uh, put bases on them and cut holes out of the top cardboard spot so that I can have the tea candles to actually be more ingrounded into this just to add a little bit more details it's not necessary but I think in the end it makes it look just a little bit nicer than it would have been if the tea light candles were just resting in that big open space. Also, because candles don't burn uh, uniformly, I just cut out some notches here and there on my large candle stands just to give that look more of a candle that's been burned for quite some time. Because that's what we're going for, is old stuff. Of course, I'm just using masking tape to put all this together. Uh, you can use any tape you want, just masking tape's cheap. And to, of course, add strength, uh, and to make sure to hide all of our masking tape, uh, we're just going to cover the whole thing in paper mache, and it'll just make it all one complete piece that is very sturdy and strong, and looks much nicer than all these uh, cut apart little pieces that were taped together. Uh, this is uh, one part, I mean it doesn't make it look amazing, but it makes it look more complete. 
which always has a nice feeling when you're making these things. That's kind of why I like to do the paper mache part of it, is because it looks, your product doesn't look that great until it actually looks like one complete piece. Uh, to actually make sure that my uh, bottom part, the cardboard at the bottom, doesn't warp, I just paper mache all the top of that and let that completely dry, and then paper mache the base of it. Uh, if you paper mache all of it, the bottom part is much more likely to warp uh, under the uh, wet paper, under the wet newspaper that I'm using. So it was just an attempt to. It takes a little bit longer because you'll have to let things dry. And then we're going to cover the whole thing in, I'm actually using ivory spray paint. I figured ivory would be a better color than white for candles. And then we're doing the longest and hardest part of this because it hurt my finger afterwards for a while. Uh, taking hot glue and putting drips on so it looks like actual wax coming off of the candles. Uh, you just push, you just have the hot glue just drip down and uh, you just cover this thing up as much as you can stand to cover it up. Uh, the more of it, the probably the better looking it is. So take your time and do something fun while it's going on because this part does take a long time. And because of my hot glue gun is not the best, it, it definitely hurts the finger after a while. Uh, pay more attention to the actual candle parts, but cover up everything, even the skull. So it seems like maybe different candles have been placed on these skulls over the years. And to add detail into this, we're taking some watered down black paint and just covering the whole thing in this watered down paint. And then taking a paper towel and just basically pulling off as much as you can. Uh, because of the nature of these hot glue gun parts, uh, it will be hard to get a lot of it off, which is fine. Because we're going to do another step to add that white back, or that ivory back in to make it look a lot nicer. Which is, of course, just going to spray paint some more on it. Uh, the, the ivory paint. Uh, make sure you do not cover the whole thing with this. You just put a very light mist over on places you feel like it's a little dark and that will bring that color back in and make it look more complete. Thanks for watching that video. Don't forget to hit subscribe. We make videos every Monday. Super bright candles over here. You can totally tell that they are on. <laughs> I just have a lot of lights on. It's hard to see it when they're on. But if you put it in a scary situation, usually it's dim lit. Or I suggest getting more powerful lights. I guess we can do the old turn off the lights. Oh man, look at that. Filming in a brightly lit window behind us. Makes us turn out so bright. Oh yeah. My fake candle just burnt my hand. <laughs>